Hey guys, what's up? I'm Sampath Nirvashan and welcome to Arduino lesson 3. So, last day we discussed how to work with the Arduino board and power up an external circuit using the Arduino board and have some manual control over a switch. So, today we are going to connect the same circuit with the computer using some inputs and we are going to give it a little program where you can make the same LED to blink with a pattern. So, let us get it to the work. Ok guys, as you can see I am already working with some uh, robo projects, two projects ongoing, a junkyard project plus a uh, standard uh, four wheeler project. So, my table is little messy today and uh, let us get into work. So, you need to give some outputs from your Arduino board to the external circuit right here. So, I am going to rearrange the circuit a little bit. Let us take a closer look. So, I am not going to use this switch. So, I am simply going to remove it. I won't be needing this uh, positive current supply. So, I am going to remove that as well. I am going to remove this uh, negative current and I am going to plug it right here very closer to this uh, black color jumper connector. So, I have little room to work with. So, right here you can see in the circuit and this is the positive pin or the anode for enthusiast and this is kind of you know simply getting connected through the breadboard to the resistor. So, here is where the positive pin can be taken into some outputs. So, that output is simply given by this Arduino board. In Arduino board, these pins, the digital pins can be used as inputs or outputs. You can simply define them. So, I am going to use this uh, second pin right here. You can see this number 2 mentioned. So, I am going to define that pin in my computer as an output and I am going to give current to this LED right here through this one. So, if I give current to this port which means my LED will light up and if I do not give current to this port which means simply my LED will turn off which means you have control from a computer. Now, next thing is if you give current to this kind of a port, you are simply saying you kept that pin in high because the digital signals in a computer has only two states. If it has current, it is simply set as high and if it do not have current, it is simply set as low. Those are the two states you have in digitals. Now, if you talk about analog signals, they have many values in a range, but if you are talking about digital signals, they have only two values. So, for an example, if I kind of show it in a small graph and digital signal is something like, I will apply 5 volts. So, you have 5 volts means you have high pin. And if you have zero means you have low pin technically. So guys, here's my circuit and first thing I need to do is simply take some output pin defined to my computer. So I'm going to use as I said the second pin as the output. So I'm going to grab a small jumper wire. I'm going to use this yellow color jumper wire which has uh, two male connectors. It is very simple. You just kind of, you know, hold this thing inside the hole like this. The probe goes inside the hole and give a small firm push. That's it. So it is connected. So that's how you simply create the connection in the board. And next thing you need to connect the same, the other male connector to the positive end, the anode or the positive pin of the LED through the resistor in this circuit. So, what I am going to simply do is simply take this male connector and in this line I am going to hit this, I am going to hook up this in any hole I want. Be Next thing we need to do is simply take this USB port and plug it into a computer and check how the program can be done. So, let us get into it.
guys let's see how to get this uh, arduino id installed in your computer so i already have it installed but let me show you guys how to work with it so the first thing i'm going to do is simply having my google chrome or any other browser whatever you need and this is the link you can see the link right here the arduino.ccen main software but don't worry you can find it in the video description and you can simply hit that and you will be directed to this site and in this site you can see arduino web editor is there and uh, that's not what i'm looking for i'm looking for the arduino ide so at scrolling i can see this arduino 1.8.10 which is uh, actually the arduino software i need and i need that installed in my computer so you have different platforms like windows installer for windows xp and up windows zip file windows app request 8.1 or 10 and uh, mac os linux 32 bit 64 bit arm 32 bit 64 bit so possibly for many uh, operating systems this is available so you can simply download it whatever is uh, choosing you guys and uh, i know for most of guys this might work windows apps request uh, in 8.1 of 10 so that's the computers nowadays you people are using so i prefer download this and if you are a linux fan download these things and if you own a mac os computer then download this one and if you work with some old machines like i do then windows installer is better you know why i am using a, an old machine to work with uh, arduino and robotic stuff because if something goes wrong that's cheap huh so i am going to use this uh, old thing and i have already installed that so don't worry about it so you can simply give it a click and uh, follow the instruction then you can simply download it right here just download it and uh, one important thing now this arduino project is an open source project so they are doing everything for our convenience to spread out this knowledge that's a huge thing guys so i prefer if you have some interest in this thing if you are a good enthusiast to keep this uh, process going on you guys can simply kind of you know donate some things uh, starting from three dollars to anything so i am not kind of sponsored by arduino no 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 i am not there but still i really like their effort the things they're doing for the sake of robotics and uh, automated stuff so if you guys can kind of you know contribute something just go ahead click upon one solution and give it a try so you are kind of giving a huge contribution for people in most of countries where they don't have enough money uh, to learn this and they can simply use that to keep the flow going on that that that's a great help by the way so anyway if you're not interested in that you can kind of uh, hit just download and simply you can see the download might appear like this now simply you can kind of you know get it and the thing will be uh, installed like a game so you can simply download it install it in your computer so i'm not going to waste time to kind of you know show you how the installation process done anybody who works with the game knows how to do it so let's get into the work and let's see how this uh, thing looks after installation i'm going to close this and uh, this is how after installing you have the shortcut in your desktop so next thing i'm gonna do I simply double click it it takes a while to kind of you know establish things blah 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 and it already has a program about uh, what we are doing today but anyway don't worry about it i'm going to kind of you know start from the beginning so i'm going to hit file and uh, get a new project here i go so i'm going to close this and this is my project right here sketch uh, october 4a so that's my date right here so don't worry about those things now i need you to focus at very important points right here there are two regions right this thing calls void setup there you have to set up your pins you're configuring your pins as input so output that's what you're kind of pretty much doing right here and next important part is void loop now i already discussed in the previous video how a circuit work and i already emphasized that circuit works as a loop and whatever happens inside the circuit whatever the instruction you need to give that simply goes here very simple so you have only two regions so don't worry about this uh, 
void things just uh, have in mind that there are two regions called void setup where you can set up your pins and uh, set up your accessories plus you can use void loop to say the Arduino board how it works now this is how you are putting a comment by the way right double slash you write something that's considered as a comment so the Arduino board is not going to take it as an instruction that is for your reference so that's very easy way of kind of uh, using the programming so whenever you want you can simply hit slash slash and uh, write anything you want and it is simply not not taken as an instruction it will be simply appearing in the code but not being followed i am going to kind of you know remove these parts because i'm not going to need them so the first thing you need to do is you have to work with some variables because in the video i already showed you that i made a second pin as the led input pin everywhere if i have to use two 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 like that in my code it's really really uncomfortable and later when you kind of check the code it will be really uncomfortable for you to understand what this hack of two stands for so what i'm going to do is simply declare a variable to hold the value so if you don't know what is a variable i suggest you here right here there is a card coming and there is a variable lesson ready for you in pascal so you you can watch it and you can kind of do some stuff in pascal because uh, basic variable theories are discussed there but for the time being i'm saying a variable is simply something which can hold a value so that value can change in a range or it can change as you want and those values have few types now if i am talking about something like integer integer is something which can hold only positive or negative whole values according to math you know that now that thing is called as the data type of the variable now it's important to say the data type otherwise the program doesn't know what type of a variable you are talking about so how to say integer to the uh, computer you are simply using this term int as soon as I type int you can see the int thing is accepted by the IDE and next thing you need to give your variable a simple name so I am going to call it LED because it resonates with me more than 2 so LED I am going to keep it equal to 2 because I have kept that uh, pin as 2 now advantage of this you are writing the code using the word LED not 2 and whenever you want to change the pin you don't have to change the entire code what you are changing is simply this number so if you are working with 12th port you just have to hit 12 that's it so the pin changes to 12 so that's one important part you can do there and for any code line you need to end the code line with a semicolon like this so that's it that's the code line now next thing I need to do is define this LED pin as the output pin so that is possible with this setup now in the setup you can see void setup and you are starting a function and in between you have this region marked with curly braces so whatever is inside that curly braces is what the IDE is reading in the compiling area so right here you are going to kind of you know hit simply this code called pin capital M mode now you need to kind of follow these capitals and symbols because uh, this is a simplified version of C sharp and they have the uh, character issue I mean upper cases lower cases they are really really uh, working with those cases so uh, make sure you are kind of hitting in the right case and next thing you need to do is simply take a bracket so inside the bracket you are going to define this pin you have said as an output pin because in your Arduino board you are going to use that second pin as an output pin so how do you do it if it is regular if you don't have this part I'm going to comment it so if you don't have this part which means you have to simply say two and then a comma and you have to say in whole capital letters output so as you can see it is taken as output but advantage of what I have done with a variable is simply you don't have to say two three blah 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 you can simply say LED now that resonates very simply 
with the code and you can simply understand that you have kept this LED pin in output so in any case later you can simply change this and you can kind of you know find out which variable host the value and which pin stands for so if you change this into four which means fourth pin which is led will be declared as an output automatically so you don't have to worry about changing the whole code i mean that's a super thing so you are kind of you know using this practice make sure you're using a practice because otherwise you are going to kind of you know have a terrible time in uh, programming these things i need to uh, close the line so i'm going to use the semicolon that's it so I have defined the pin LED which is the second pin not the fourth pin uh, as the output pin that's it so it's done. So next thing I need to do is simply write the code for the LED to blink. Now how is that possible you need to go inside this loop inside the curly braces like this and there you're going to use this command called digital write. So very simple, make sure this letter right here W is capital. And in that we are going to take a small bracket. Now this is a good practice. You kind of, you know, end the code right there and type whatever is underneath. So you won't forget put in this semicolon because I'm going to show you. If you don't have that, the compiler is going to say error. That's, that's it. So inside digital write, you need to say put this LED pin high because I already told you high means it carries current so if you put it in high which means this second pin carries current so the circuit is completed and the LED is lighting up and if you keep it low which means second pin is not getting current so the circuit is not completed which means the LED is turned off so let's light up that LED so I'm going to hit LED comma with whole capital letters I am going to say hi that's it so you can see the LED lights up let's upload this into my Arduino and see how the thing works so you can simply connect your Arduino and you can go to tools and you can see the Arduino Uno is automatically selected this is why using a genuine board is very important because automatically everything are selected mm -hmm. otherwise you have to kind of select some ports right here which is already selected with this so com16 port is already selected so you don't have to worry about it but if you use assembled boards you need to kind of you know verify the port because uh, most of assembled boards are not simply completely detected by the uh, IDE so it can't identify the ports so you have to kind of you know try ports and uh, find out which one is uh, capable of uploading it so right here i have already connected it with my arduino board and com16 port so that's it i don't have to worry about it so how to upload this so you have yourself a completed sketch this thing is called as a sketch so uploading it is very simple you can see this button when i kind of go hover over upon it you can see in this side upload is visible so you simply kind of you know give a click and you need to save this sketch in some sort of a name so i'm going to use my desktop to save this and i'm going to kind of keep this name and that's it so you can see down here the compiling is started and the uploading started and now it's done uploading so next thing we are going to do is simply see how it works so let's have a look Okay, you saw that the LED is continuously lighted up because this is going to work as cycles and next thing happening is your LED is continuously lighted. What I want to do is simply making a blinking light. So to blink means you need to kind of turn this off after a certain period of lighting. So how to keep a delay? Now I already gave the code delay. Delay is the code. So I'm going to simply say delay. So I'm going to simply say delay in simple letters and next thing i'm going to do is simply open up a bracket i'm going to already close it and inside the bracket i'm gonna say the time period i want this delay to work on now one point to be noted the time works right here in milliseconds milliseconds means thousandth part of the second so if you need 
this thing to blink up one second which means you have to say thousand if you need two seconds which means you have to say two thousand that is how it works so i am going to simply say something like thousand and next thing i am going to turn this light off after thousand milliseconds or one second so don't be kind of you know really really enthusiastic about typing just kind of you know copy this by highlighting it hit ctrl c ctrl key plus c now it is copied and click here and hit ctrl key plus v and now it's pasted otherwise you know why you have to kind of you know type everything so it's hack of a work i don't like it so next thing i'm going to do is simply here it is high i'm going to keep it low so all capitals it says low so you can see this and next thing uh, as soon as it's load i need to wait in low current again for some sort of a delay so i'm going to copy this same like earlier ctrlc and i'm going to paste this right here saying ctrlv so now you can see that uh, it will uh, light up and it will wait one second and it will turn off and it will wait one second again it will light up again the same thing happens so this works as a loop now one point to be noted here if you want some other time which means you have to simply change these values into something like, like another value so let's say you need this to be lighted for half a second which means you have to put something like 500 and you have to put 500 here as well one inconvenient fact right here is you need to kind of change values in two places which is really really boring so i'm going to use my variable practice right here i'm going to declare an in type variable to hold the time i'm going to simply say something like due for duration and next thing i'm going to keep a space and i'm going to type the value i need to be given at the time so it's thousand and here it is so i'm going to put that variable name right here instead of the value so i'm going to sim simply say div and here also it's div now next thing you need to do is if you need to change the duration of this if you need to change the delay of this simply just go here and simply change the value up to 500 so both the places are changed there itself that's very simple so if you need a rapid blinking so you can put something like 100 that's it so this is the code and let's see how practically it works in the circuit That's it guys, so in next video we are going to discuss how to make the Knight Rider circuit a possible. Have you seen that Mike's Knight Rider car in the buffer you have like an LED panel where the light travels in this pattern that you can see. So we are going to make that pattern possible with the same program we did today with some little improvement. So what are the things you need in extra? You need 5 LEDs with the desired color but uh, I prefer red, I love red. So, I prefer 5 LEDs with red color plus 5 resistors of 220 ohm plus I need some jumper wires so you prepare like 10 jumper wires that would do the work. So I need jumper connectors, I need 5 LEDs plus I need 5 220 ohm resistors to continue with my work. So with the things let's meet in next video very soon, very 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 soon, bye.